The shrinking GDP growth, low tax revenue, and an expanding debt position are among the factors poised to reduce Uganda's attractiveness to global lenders. At a time when the country needs resources to get itself out of a tough economic spot, where it has been pushed by the COVID pandemic. Uganda's GDP growth has come down from highs of 6% to around 3% today, the lowest since 1985, according to the World Bank figures. This has been conditioned by the slowdown in economic activity due to the impact of COVID and associated standard operating procedures. The biggest casualty in all this has been demand as the public's purchasing power and their ability to acquire goods and services remains weak. According to observers, the ripple from this state of affairs has now caught up with commercial banks like many other sectors of the economy as they remain stuck with over 2.6 trillion shillings which they haven't been able to lend due to low demand. A number of traders still have unsold stock partly because of the lockdown that heavily impacted the country's major business hubs and households purchasing power, while some of the country's vibrant sectors such as the hospitality industry and education remain largely inactive. Banks are now keenly looking at the country's securities market, currently less with good yields and good activity. Experts, however, warn that while the high yields offered by government on both the treasury bills and bonds may be good for uptakers, including banks, they will further complicate the country's already worrying debt situation. Uganda's debt has expanded to 56.9 trillion from 35.3 trillion shillings in 2017, representing a 70% jump. To this end, global credit rating company Fleet Ratings has downgraded the country's credit rating to negative from stable. The implication of this is that the country will have to contend with higher borrowing costs because of the perceived possibility of default. While in the past, governments were perceived to be good borrowers that never defaulted, recent developments have pointed to this possibility. And indeed today, governments, including that of Argentina and Zambia, have already defaulted on their debt servicing obligations. Experts are now pointing to the need for the country to focus on sectors where it enjoys historic advantages, such as agriculture, to reach state performance. At the release of the recent World Bank Economic Outlook for Uganda, agro-industrialization and more extension services are among areas highlighted for government to pursue as it seeks to earn more from its agricultural products, such as coffee. Today, a number of agricultural commodity value chains, such as coffee, remain dominated by multinational players at a higher level who also tend to reap the biggest despite expanding production. There are also calls for better debt utilization, reduction of government recurrent expenditure, extension of support packages to the private sector, which has been hit hard by COVID, and expansion of the country's COVID vaccine program to get the economy back on track. Well, it's time now to take a very short commercial break. Man and Marcus continues after this break.